Well, hello and welcome back to Radio Heaven. Tonight we're going to do another uh, featured set. And this is definitely a, a featured set in my collection. An iconic piece from the mid-1920s. This is a Federal Model 61. 6-2 battery set. Uh, one of the, uh, I think set has the uh, distinction of having the most front panel controls of any radio that was made for home broadcast reception. There means it's not a ham radio. This is a piece for listening to the radio at home. Uh, I've got, uh, I have a, here a, a federal, original federal catalog that, uh, that shows it. And uh, in here it, uh, get the page turned. It lists the Model 61 as being $223 in 1924, which is a right fair piece of money for that time. Uh, like I said, I'm really proud of it. I got, I got uh, a, pair, a pair of federal headphones hanging on it here. The two hang tags here are original. They were with the set when I got it. This one shows it having been tested and inspected on December 4th, 1924. Uh, I was also lucky enough to win a blue ribbon at the uh, 2003 Charlotte Antique Radio Meet. It has a, uh, an original uh, log card paper clip to the top, to the, uh, to the card, to the instruction card in the top of the set. And if the log card is paper, is, uh, paper clip to that, you can tell the years that it's hung there that it's taken a natural, you know, a permanent curve now to it. Uh, very nice set. It's a completely original. The only thing that I've done to it is I redid the light, the lettering on the front panel and some of the knobs. The paint that was originally put in there at the factory had dried up and fallen out, and I redid that. And I plan on doing a uh, doing a little video about how to fix that one of these days. So we'll hang on to that. I'm gonna pick the camera up here and a little close up of the get you get a little closer view of the front panel. And uh, I'm not too shaky, but it's a it's a very pretty set. You can see the, the logo there and the uh, the cards, the federal logo. And we'll go up here. and We'll look at the inside. And the inside has the thing that really makes this set extra special. This is this piece of paper you see here. These are the tube sockets. This set, like I said, it was uh, had six tubes. And this piece of paper is a seal that was put over the tube island in the factory. Well, you can see the seal is still there. This tube's never had any tubes. This set's never had any tubes installed in it. It's like a it's like a new untitled car. It's, it's essentially a new radio. It's never been used. It's never had power put on it. It's never never uh, never had any tubes installed on it. And I think that makes it a little extra special than than your garden variety uh, sets, even though they are. Really neat sets and would be a a, uh, a centerpiece of anybody's collection. Nice shiny front mirror, black front panel there, and it's a definitely a definitely a prize of mine, and uh, very proud to uh, very proud to have it. The uh, the original owner of it bought it, and and another one just like it at a radio store sale in South Carolina in 1925. Store was going to have gone out of business and uh, they were selling the uns unsold merchandise and he went down and he bought two of them. Well, he was a good ham of the 1920s uh, where typically they built there most everything. Saw this pretty mahogany cabinet and thought, wow, I believe I could build a transmitter in that. So he took it home, took the chassis out of one of them and built a transmitter in the cabinet. I'd really like to find that transmitter. If anybody knows of a Federal 61 cabinet with a transmitter built into it, I'd like to see it. Fortunately, this one got put in the attic and saved for a future project. Well, the future project never came along, so uh, fast forward uh, 60 years later to about 1985, and his son is now live, lives in his parents' house. He's in the attic and he finds it. He's an elderly gentleman. He finds the, the radio, doesn't know it's there. He's a ham. He uh, knows a friend of mine uh, who has now passed away named Rufus Castles who uh, was also interested in antique radios. 
and ask Rufus if he knew anybody that he might be interested in. He wanted it to go to, to somebody, go into a, to a collection, somebody would take care of it. So uh, Rufus got the two of us together. Uh, I made the uh, the trip. Matter of fact, I think Robert Lozier went with me uh, to uh, right down to Columbia, South Carolina, is where the guy lived, and we picked it up and brought it home. And uh, it's been a a proud piece of my collection for uh, 25 years now. Uh, I'm really, really, really doubly proud. When I got it home, one of the things that there were a couple of things missing off of it. I think probably the original owner maybe needed a screw or needed something. There were about half of the screws around the front panel were missing. And it was hard to figure out why it was in such pristine shape, but those screws were gone. Well, at one of the open houses that we had back then before the Charlotte meet, uh, Rufus was at the house and he looked at it and he was and he said, he took a screwdriver out of his pocket and took one of the screws out and looked at it. He said, okay, he dropped the screw in his pocket. And I said, what are you doing? He said, that's okay. And uh, about uh, two weeks later, I get a little box in the mail. Matter of fact, the little plastic box is laying. I see it laying here in the bottom of the cabinet. And it rattles and I look inside of it and there's two dozen freshly made oval head screws that you just can't hardly buy these type, that size, that thread, oval head like that anymore. And Rufus being a, the uh, consummate machinist took a screw home and made and handmade the screws on a lathe that he had made and, and ma manufactured the, the, part, the right, right screws for it. Uh, I gave them to my friend Robert Lozier. He took them home and nickel plated them for me. And they're, they're like I said, that's, okay, I guess there's two things that's not original. Not all screws are original and not all whites are original. But other than that, <laughs> it's pretty original. And I'm really proud to have it. It's just, uh, like I said, it's a centerpiece of my collection. Doesn't fail to catch the eye of, uh, of uh, collectors coming in and particularly new collectors when they see it. There's a new collector in the neighborhood. His name's, first name is Blake, and uh, Blake's probably about to wet his pants right now. He just, every time he comes over, he just drools. I'll have to give him a, a chin cup to hold to keep the drool off the carpet as he's looking at the Federal. He wants it, wants it or one like it so bad he can't stand it. Hang on, uh, hang on, Blake. I guess you'll get it from my estate. Anyway, thanks again for dropping by. I hope you've enjoyed another visit, and we will do this again. Take care.